Our oceans cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface, but did you know that over 80% of them remain unexplored? Being too deep, too cold, or too dangerous, these places are home to secrets most people have never seen. Until now. From really freaky fish to inexplicable objects, get your flippers and oxygen tank ready as we uncover the strangest things ever found in the deep sea. The Eldritch Horror Deep down in the ocean, you expect to see some pretty crazy creatures. The pressure of all the water and lack of sunlight from all the refraction means that what lives down here has to adapt. This can mean bigger eyes to pick up as much light as possible, or spongier bodies to deal with the pressure, or… what? What the heck is that? I can't tell where its tentacles end and its head begins. If it even has a head, what is that thing? The footage of this roiling nightmare was captured by the Serpent Project back in 2015, off the coast of Angola in the South Atlantic Ocean. Using a remote-operated vehicle, they dived to 4,350 feet below the waves when they stumbled upon this bizarre creature. Initially, they had no idea what it could be, aside from the wriggling, writhing spawn of Cthulhu. But after analyzing its features, they concluded that it's not, in fact, an eldritch horror, but a kind of siphonophore, a colony of marine organisms that work together as a hive, though to us humans they simply appear to be one incredibly creepy entity. However, this hive-like structure means there's no uniform shape or size that a colony takes on as the EV Nautilus team revealed back in 2014. At some 200 feet down in the waters off the southern coast of the USA, they came across this otherworldly siphonophore. It looks completely different from the sentient knot we saw before, but these two organism colonies belong to the same family. Ah, because the horror of looking on one wasn't enough, I take it. Doll Discovery Thanks to its imperious 880-foot-long size and status as the unsinkable ship, the Titanic has literally gone down in history as the world's most notorious shipwreck. Yet despite that, concrete evidence of the Titanic's fate wasn't discovered until 1985, 74 years after it hit an iceberg and sank. But fisherman Abel Frederico Nogueras actually uncovered the Titanic's fate eight years before the whole shipwreck was found. Back in 1976, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, he hauled up the net of his trawler and spotted something that didn't look like a fish. As he leaned in to get a better look, he was shocked to see an eyeless, lifeless face staring right back at him. But it wasn't human, it was a porcelain doll head. Fished from some 6,500 feet below, this wasn't any old kid's toy. As it happened, Nogueras had been fishing in the same area of the Atlantic Ocean that the Titanic sunk. After Nogueras passed away in 1992, his son sold the porcelain piece to Teresa Martin, a doll collector. She delved deeper into its history, uncovering documents about girls on board the ship that had brought dolls with them. She discovered that Titanic survivor, Eva Hart, had written in her memoirs that she left her doll in her cabin when she evacuated the ship. It then turned out that the make of the doll head was Schnell and Hofmeister 1906, the very same manufacturer of Hart's doll. Whoa. Okay, whatever you do, no one tell James Cameron about this. Ancient Artifact If you think 100-year-old Titanic artifacts are ancient, they are nothing compared to another deep-sea discovery made in 1984. Marine archaeologist Ayu Jalelhai was diving up the coast of Atlet in Israel in the hope of finding a shipwreck. While he didn't stumble across a broken boat, he did discover something else that piqued his interest. Forty feet under the waves, Galilai spotted the remnants of rectangular houses. He reported the finding, leading to more underwater excavations of the area. Soon, graves, human remains. These water wells that look like portals into another world 
and even seven megaliths arranged in a stone semicircle emerged from this marine metropolis. If that wasn't crazy enough, scientists carbon dated the site, finding it to be around 8,500 years old. For reference, that makes this place 400 years older than the pyramids of Giza. And as for that massive megalith, it's around 3,500 years older than Stonehenge. The question is, why were the remains of this once special city submerged? Was it part of some ancient aqua empire? Well, scientists believe that the settlement, which is about eight times the size of a standard football field, was suddenly abandoned. Why? A study estimated that at the time that Atlit Yam was present, an eruption at Mount Etna in southern Italy caused a 130-foot-high tsunami to engulf the Mediterranean coastal cities within a matter of hours. If only they'd constructed some flood defenses instead of those massive megaliths. Strange Stalkers The deep sea isn't just home to artifacts from a bygone era. It's also the place for some curious creatures that are very much alive in the present day. Take this grizzly guy, better known as a deep sea lizard fish. Man, I'm gonna struggle to get sleep tonight. But scary as these fish look, I wouldn't worry too much about bumping into one. That's because these two foot long critters only live at depths of around 2,000 feet to 11,000 feet. This part of the ocean is known as the Midnight Zone. It's a place of almost constant darkness, except for light from any bioluminescent beasts swimming around. The lack of light means that deep sea lizard fish have to adapt. To detect prey, they use their enormous eyes to amplify what little light reaches down to those deep depths. Yet eerie eyes aren't the only frightening feature of this creature. Their monster mouths are filled with hundreds of sharp, needle-like teeth, used for piercing and trapping prey. Deep-sea lizardfish are one of the world's deepest living apex predators, and won't hesitate to eat anything they find down in the dark, including their own kind. Though if they do run across another lizardfish, there's an equal chance they'll get randy with it instead. Huh? Okay, not where I thought this was going. Because of how dark and sparse of life it is at the depths these fish thrive at, all deep-sea lizardfish are hermaphroditic, meaning they have male and female reproductive organs, so they can breed with any other member of their species. Well, that puts a whole new spin on the phrase, playing with your food. Standing Strong Traveling even further down to the deeper, darker depths of 15,000 feet, we find another very odd organism. The tripod fish, as it's aptly called, is found in the abyssal zone, a section right below the midnight zone that stretches from 13,000 to 20,000 feet. And it's here where the tripod fish does its thing. Its thing being standing up with its three elongated projections from its fins. Unlike deep-sea lizardfish, these critters aren't blessed with enormous eyes. Instead, they possess peepers that are barely a millimeter in diameter. You'd think that'd make hunting tricky for tripod fish, but not so. Once settled on the deep seabed, this freaky fish turns its head into the direction of water movement. Then, it waits motionless until it detects any potential meals, except not with its eyes, but extended pectoral fins. These hover above its head like antennae, picking up swimming vibrations from any approaching prey. Thanks to the desolate depths tripod fish inhabit, they, like the deep sea lizard fish, share a lonely existence. So they are also hermaphroditic. Except not only are these funky fish able to mate with any other member of their species, they can even make both sperm and eggs to produce offspring all by themselves. Talk about being resourceful. Open Wide Back up at 10,000 feet and re-entering the midnight zone is another creepy creature that has to be seen to be believed. Known as the gulper eel or pelican eel, this deep sea find is most notable for its massive maw, which, surprise, resembles that of a pelican. 
In total, these guys measure around two and a half feet long, with their head taking up around 25% of their overall length. But their chops aren't only big, they're also loosely hinged, allowing them to open wide, with the loose skin of their underside creating a massive net that can scoop up prey twice their size. But the pelican eel's funky features don't end with their massive mouths. At the other end of their anatomy is a whip-like tail that doubles as a light-producing organ, known as a photophore. Through bioluminescence, the photophore glows bright pink, illuminating the dark waters around the eel. You might think that this blows its cover, but the light acts as a lure, attracting prey to the massive mouth of these monsters. Can you think of anything worse than this being your last sight? Well, whatever you do, don't go towards the light. Colossal Cutter Odd organisms aren't the only thing in the deep blue that'll leave you scratching your head. What would you do if you found a giant knife-like object whilst scuba diving? I mean, just take a look at this perplexing picture. No, don't rub your eyes, those divers are indeed holding a gigantic knife. This daunting discovery, found by divers off the coast of Madagascar, has left people on the internet stumped. Presuming that those guys are adult size, then that knife's gotta be over 7 feet long. The question is, who needs a knife that big? Some theories suggest that this whopping weapon was used by some prehistoric giants that walked the earth tens of thousands of years ago. Who knows, maybe this blade was used to strike down some supersized shark like the Megalodon. In truth, it's likely that this ominous object isn't actually a knife after all. Instead, it's far more probable that this is a lost prop from a movie that somehow ended up in the ocean. Personally, I reckon it's an aircraft propeller that snapped from a fallen plane, or a rudder or dagger board that broke off a boat. What do you think? Tell you what, hit subscribe if you think that this find is from a lost movie set, and hit like if you think it's from an airplane propeller. If you have your own theories, why don't you let me know down in the comments below. Sea Sculptures at first glance, Molinier Bay off the coast of Granada looks as pretty as a postcard. But all is not as it seems under the water's surface of this beautiful bay. You see, any scuba diver that dives under the waves here will be confronted by this haunting sight. Yep, yeah, that's it, I'm never going in the sea again. Fortunately, this isn't a dark, twisted underwater version of Pompeii. These concrete figures are man-made. British sculptor Jason DeCares Taylor constructed the sculptures from life casts of the local community, not to fill divers with dread, but to engage people with the underwater environment that surround them. Man, imagine going on a pretty picturesque scuba dive when suddenly you're confronted with that. Around 4,500 miles north of Molinaire Bay, there's an even creepier underwater statue. 134 feet below the surface of Lake Neuchatel, you'll find this 16-foot-long, spine-chilling shark sculpture that'll ensure you experience some nautical nightmares. The question is, why is there a 16-foot-long terror shark inhabiting a lake in Switzerland? Well, this burly beast was made in 2007 and used as a prop for a short film called Chocolock. After the movie was finished, the scary shark sculpture was dumped in the lake, presumably to attract and scare tourists. I mean, can you imagine swimming in that lake without knowing that marine monster was at the bottom? I think my wetsuit would get a little more wet. See you later, alligator. Speaking of powerful predators lurking in deep waters, that brings us to our next fearsome find. Located over 6,000 feet below the water's surface in the Gulf of Mexico. Yep, your eyes don't deceive you. That is an alligator at the bottom of the deep blue. Except unlike that scary shark, this gator is no sculpture. It's 100% real. Can you imagine how scary it'd be for a deep sea diver to come face to face with one of these powerful predators? The question is, how can an alligator, an animal normally found in rivers and lakes, survive in the deep sea? The answer? They don't. 
You see, this alligator isn't alive. Turns out three gators were part of an experiment, with marine biologists from the Louisiana University's Marine Consortium dropping them down into the deep sea to observe how creatures that thrive down there react to an unusual food source. The results shocked them, with one whole alligator being devoured by football-sized isopods in less than 24 hours. Another specimen was gnawed right down to its bone, leaving a strange brown fuzz behind. DNA studies revealed that this weird residue was actually a newly discovered species of bone-eating worm, like the deep sea couldn't get any stranger. And as for the third carcass, well, researchers don't actually know. The entire gator went missing after eight days, with just the deployment harness and weight used to sink it remaining. On further investigation, the scientists discovered drag marks where they'd originally left a 40-pound heavy gator. To this day, they still don't know what colossal critter had the power and stomach to ravage an entire alligator. That's deeply unsettling. Turtle Tomb Now, alligators aren't the only reptiles to end up in the sea's depths. Just ask photographer Josh Vergara. When he went diving off the coast of Sipadan Island in Malaysia, he was expecting to catch some mesmerizing marine shots. Instead, he discovered something that sent a shiver down his spine. Around 75 feet underwater, Vergara stumbled across a cave, but it was no ordinary cave. This cavern was chock full of deceased turtles. The cave, known by locals as the Turtle Tomb, is filled with dozens of shelled skeletons. Now, sea turtles are famously solitary creatures, so how come so many skeletons can be found in this graveyard? Well, some believe that the turtles chose this cave as a resting place, seeing out their final moments here in peace. But sadly, the more probable explanation isn't so Disney-esque. The cave is filled with plenty of twists and turns, so it's more likely they each ventured in at some point and became disoriented. While turtles can hold their breath for an impressive two hours, it's likely that, not knowing how to get out, they all asphyxiated. And that's as sad as it is strange. Scary Shell How about we focus on some deep sea critters that are alive and kicking? Or swimming, should I say? This cute little crustacean is a hermit crab. These guys have a soft abdomen, unlike the hard, calcified abdomens in most other crustaceans. So, to protect their bodies from predators, hermit crabs think resourcefully. Typically, these guys use empty sea snail shells, but this handy hermit had a bolder idea. Now, it may look like some sort of alien gunk, but this is actually a Parapagurus hermit crab, using a sea anemone-like animal known as a zoanthid as a shell. When hermit crabs are small, they pick up a sea snail shell. Then, at some point, the zoanthid attaches to it. As the hermit crab grows, so does the zoanthid, beginning to take on the role of the original shell, coiling around the abdomen of the hermit crab, leading to this horror. Disturbing as it looks, it's actually all good. The crab avoids the dangerous task of swapping shells which briefly leaves them exposed, while the stinging cells in the tentacles of the zoanthids deter any predators from snacking on the hermit. This symbiotic relationship benefits the zoanthids too, as the crab's mobility allows the zoantharians to access different areas of the ocean for feeding. Sounds like a match made in heaven, even if it looks like it's made in hell. Beastly Blimp in April 2023, Roman Fedortsov went fishing in the Barents Sea, off the northern coast of Russia. He was working on a commercial trawler, looking to catch the usual – cod, haddock, maybe mackerel too if he was lucky. However, that's not all that showed up in his net. With the nets able to reach down as far as 3,300 feet, it's not uncommon for creepy creatures to be hauled into the ship as well. And that fateful day, Fedortsov hauled up this fearsome fish. 
its fleshy pink mouth, scaly body, lizard-like tail, and grotesquely protruding eyes make this pure nightmare fuel. After posting a picture of it online, theories about what this organism was started to sprout. Some wondered if it was a rare abnormality. Others blamed pollution for these dreadful defects. Turns out, it was neither. This fish is an onion-eyed grenadier, a ray-finned fish that thrives around 3,000 feet down. Now, these guys have all the funky features of Fedortsov's find, except for a couple of things. Firstly, they don't share the same distended pink mouth, and secondly, while their eyes are large, they don't normally appear to be popping out of their head. The bulging eyes and mouth are caused by barotrauma, the physical damage to body tissues caused by a change in pressure. Fish have a swim bladder, an internal gas-filled organ that helps them maintain buoyancy at different depths in the water. At the deep depths the onion-eyed grenadier experiences, the pressure is high, meaning gases within the swim bladder are compressed. But when a fish is rapidly brought to the surface, the external pressure significantly decreases. As a result, the compressed gases in the swim bladder expand, leading to the fish's surrounding organs and tissue popping out. Hmm. I think I prefer the pollution explanation. Nautical Nuke Over time, ocean floors have become home to some mysterious man-made products. Take this image that circulated around the web. That is what looks like a nuclear reactor embedded into sediment on the ocean floor, which would be terrifying if it wasn't Photoshop. But don't breathe too easy, because there are nuclear reactors scattered throughout the seas, and lots of them. Between the 1960s and 80s, the Soviet Union dumped around 18,000 radioactive objects into the Barents Sea alone. Yep, that very same sea with that freaky fish. Most of the objects pose little environmental risk. However, some are increasingly seen as a hazard to the ecosystems in the Sea of Northern Russia. Some of the most radioactive objects are the nuclear reactors from submarines K-11, K-19, K-27, K-140, and K-159, as well as the nuclear reactor that served the Lenin icebreaker. It's believed that these six objects account for more than 90% of the radioactive sources dumped in the Barents Sea. The problem is, removing nuclear time bombs from depths stretching down over 650 feet is not an easy task, requiring specialist equipment, experts, and a lot of manpower. This means that the operation to remove just those six objects alone would cost close to $300 million. Yeah, I don't think those reactors are going to be moving for a while. Marine Monster But it's not just the deep, barren sea that's full of ghoulish horrors. Traveling 4,000 miles southeast of those wicked waters, you'll find the Pacific Ocean. It's here that back in 2010, researchers of the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology, or JAMSTEC, were remotely operating an underwater vehicle, plunging it down to a depth of 1,000 feet and recording what they found. Looks pretty standard, water, seabed, but then it got a lot less standard and way spookier. What the hell is that? A demonic sea cow? The Pokemon muck come to life? After seeing this footage, some people have suggested that this could even be Ningen, a cryptid creature from modern folklore. Researchers reportedly spotted this humanoid marine beast off the coast of Antarctica, estimating it to be around 65 to 100 feet long. For reference, that's around the same size as a blue whale. If that wasn't ominous enough, the Ningen is also said to have large, vacuous eyes and five-fingered hands. Now, we can't get a good look at the full size or limbs of this critter, but those eyes do look pretty soul-sucking, don't they? Maybe the Ningen isn't just folklore. 
That being said, the researchers operating the vehicle believe it not to be the Nimgen, but just a rock with a few barnacles attached to it, giving it the illusion of having eyes. What do you think, though? Barnacle-covered rock, or a supersized humanoid marine monster that's about to destroy the world? I know what my money's on. The Nimgen. Are you squidding me? But for all the strange deep-sea finds we've uncovered so far, there's one that trumps them all. Why? Well, for starters, it's found in the Hadal Zone, the deepest part of the ocean. Located at the bottom of the oceanic trenches, more people have been to the moon than the Hadal Zone. If you did somehow make it here, I'd keep your eyes peeled, just in case your submarine bumps into this ocean oddball. Man, it's like if Slenderman took squid form. But while Slenderman is a cryptid that only exists on the internet, this thing is absolutely real. Living at head-bursting depths of around 20,000 feet, this creepy creature goes by the name of Magna Pina, or Big Fin Squid. And true to its name, these guys have some pretty big fins. Well, technically, tentacles. Unlike other squid, their appendages are held at elbow-like joints, with the main stretch of the tentacles themselves suspended below the squid's body. In all, these appendages can stretch some 26 feet long, making them close to three times the height of an NBA basketball hoop. Despite their stretchy size, the depth these guys live at mean they've only been spotted a handful of times, and so much is unknown about them. Like, how do these beasts hunt? Well, one theory is that they drag their tall tentacles along the sea floor, grabbing whatever edible organisms cross their perilous path. Another is that they simply float, waiting passively for prey like zooplankton to get trapped in their tentacles. However these guys hunt, coming eyeball to eyeball with a big fin squid four miles beneath the water's surface might leave you with an axquident in your pants. After all this time, we'd like to officially introduce you to myself, Jay, and Wesley. We are the narrators here at Be Amazed. But we also know you guys tend to have a favorite for certain videos and topics. So, are you Team Wesley or Team Jay? Please click on the poll in the description to let me know. Whew! That rounds up some of the more nightmarish things ever found in the deep sea. Which ocean discovery left you scared of the water? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.